today we are going to focus on one aspect of work and we kind of call it anywhere. The fact that uh, because we have these devices and because we can work anywhere in the office, we're no longer tethered to the workstation. So just what we're doing five, ten years ago is no longer applicable to today. Most everybody would rather not sit at their desk all day and you really don't work at your desk all day. So what I'm going to show you today is really the idea that any place in the facility, any place around the workplace, um, we consider that areas that you can do work. And for that to be productive, uh, we need to load it up with stuff. We need to have whiteboards. We need to have technology close at hand. We need to have the right lounge furniture. In fact, we have a lot of clients where the workstation is kind of like secondary. Everybody comes in super early and goes and tries to grab the couch by the window. So we're seeing this as being a big driver is that people just don't sit at their desk all day. They kind of work their entire workday ritual changes from the, day they, the moment they get there kind of to the end of their day. So I'm going to go through some interior offices. A lot of you may work at these companies. We've worked with several, several of the, of the, major, of, of the smaller startups and a lot of the bigger companies. And now what we're doing is we're actually changing these what I would call the older tech companies, such as the Cisco's. We're actually developing new workplace strategies for them because no longer are the workers sitting at their desk all day and you don't, you're not tethered as much. And it's very difficult for the recruit or to retain with that old type of workstation. So the first slide um, is we're going to look at a set of slides that's really inside the office. Um, and a lot of you probably have seen these things, but you really, um, you probably didn't realize that there is a lot of thought and design that goes into these ancillary areas that are away from your desk. Not just the enclosed conference room, but around in the hallways, underneath things. We try to make every single part of the office usable. So in this first slide, um, kind of a typical, this is, this, is a, this is actually a project we're doing right now. It's a very interesting radial design um, and it kind of, it's all sort of divided up. What we, what we want to show is that in all these areas, mostly the, the transitory spaces, mostly the aisles, um, is where we want to take advantage. We want to really make those spaces useful and engaging. We want them to become destinations. So what do we do? We really spend time curating those spaces so they just don't feel like afterthoughts. This is kind of one of our early projects. I don't know if you know, uh, 395 Page Mill was um, Palo Alto. This building sat vacant for probably 15 years after Agilent vacated it. So AOL took over the, the building. And what we did is we actually started, what could we do to the hallways to activate the hallways? And a lot of it is things like this where you can kind of see the whiteboard going up and down the hall, making sure that we have nice seating or an easy, easy, easy to get to seating. This was actually one of the first times we actually brought blue bottle coffee into the building. So we're trying to create amenities that people want in the common area. Not just vending machines, but actual baristas making you coffee and you use these areas. This is actually the new Yelp facility. So Yelp, everybody probably knows or they've been to 140 New Montgomery where they had engineers and they had kind of sales and marketing all in one building. Well, engineering is so big now that sales and marketing and kind of the customer facing part of the business has moved to its own building. And what did we learn? We learned that engineers like it super quiet, which we knew that, but customer support loves to walk around and if they can walk around with their headset and deal with a customer, they will. So we ended up creating these big extra wide aisles with lots of whiteboard and places to kind of set your coffee down or have a quick meeting at these high tables. But kind of what you'll notice in this facility is the extra generous hallways. This is Evernote. Evernote, I don't know if anybody been there, but this big staircase is sort of representative of we don't just meet any, uh, in a conference room or in an auditorium. We actually turn this little, this, this, this big staircase and this landing into a presentation area. So again, we're using all the transitory paces. We're giving them several uses, not just transitory, not just walking through them, but you might sit and hang out in these areas. This is actually Cisco Meraki. And um, we had done the Meraki space prior to the Cisco acquisition, but we, the whole idea is that they knew this acquisition was coming, so we actually designed this really, really kind of 
innovative workplace for, for the Meraki employees. Again, making extra wide hallways, making sure that there was available technology, power, sound mitigation. This is all acoustical foam that's in the roof. But the idea is here, you're just going to pull your iPad or your laptop and you're going to sit here for a while and work. So you may work at your workstation for a couple of hours, but you may work here for most of the day. It's highly likely that you might never leave this area. A lot of people like to sit in these lounge type settings. So it's important that we actually curate them. We make them feel like somebody thought about it, that people cared about what went into these areas. Um, this is actually one of our first Uber projects and probably the most memorable one because we did these big touch screens. But the idea is that technology was omnipresent. You can push to the screen. You had USB ports um, hidden in furniture. Uh, you had high tables. But all this transitory space is adjacent to a standard conference room, adjacent to lounge furniture and high seating. But you can kind of see the mix of furniture is very different. And this is directly related to mobile devices really taking over the workplace. Um, I'll tell you, I started in the late 90s. <laughs> this is, we were tethered to workstations. We had gigantic PCs under our desks with gi gigantic monitors, and you never left. Um, and we were lucky enough to work on the first Facebook headquarters at 61 California. I mean, we still had heavy devices, and we were trying to become more mobile, but we are more mobile than ever. So it's really driven design. Um, I actually think that more and more devices are needed for these type of areas because in, in, in a lot of ways, you know, whiteboarding and things are great, but, you know, it, there's no smart boards that you can put in these areas. You can take a picture, but there's things that are kind of missing that I think there's lots of opportunities in what I call the transitory space, the in-between. Everybody knows what to put at a desktop. Kind of everybody knows what to put a conference room. But these spaces here, outside the building, those things... There's not a lot of product. There's not a lot of stuff that you can go and uh, buy and put in these areas. This is at Live Fire. Again, technology. We want to be able to kind of push the screens real easily. We want to be able to get access to power. We want the furniture to be not too fussy. But we want it to be considered. We want it to look and feel like somebody considered. So this is obviously made to sit this way to look at this monitor. But it actually is the lobby at Live Fire. We're actually on this left side, it's kind of fun because we find that people will use any nook and cranny. Um, so rather than they just kind of get some pull-up chairs or some really cheap folding chairs, we're actually going to design something in there. So we want to we make sure that people know. So it's very intuitive. Hey, I can go underneath this staircase. This is actually at Capital One. We designed this with actually the Stanford D School. So the whole idea was about innovation and creativity and how can we get people to think outside the box. So we created a very non-typical Capital One office. This is Meraki again. And these, we call these micro shelters. And the great thing about these, they're lined with felt. We, we, I think we, the first place we did this was square. But we created these rooms that were heavily felt. And they actually, when you break the plane of that opening, the sound gets absorbed into the material. So you actually, there's an audible difference. So by just putting your hair, head back, you actually can hear a phone call. And when you come back out, kind of the sound waves are no longer trapped, are no longer going to the material. So the further you go back into this little shelter, you actually, it's very quiet in there. And I think those spaces are becoming more and more important. We're, you see phone booths going in. You see lots of things going in for this kind of private conversation. But these are kind of a simple, simple way to do it. Again, Capital One, uh, they liked it so much, we put a bunch of them in there. We actually did one that was sort of a different, kind of climbed up into it, a little bit more nested. Um, this is actually new um, Uber. So this is actually in one of the towers. Um, very different aesthetic, um, not as refined, more of their skunk works area. So they wanted to kind of have this very gritty, um, kind of bootstrapping type of vibe to it. So we've got unfinished uh, uh, drywall. We have this really cool padded uh, cave that you can go sit in, grab your device. Uh, very popular. At Live Fire, I think you know a lot about sit to stand. The idea that these little stand-up areas in the hallway are very useful. They're kind of really useful for that quick meeting. And you just pop your device down, stand up, have a quick little chat with somebody. Uh, but the idea that these are really popular, the sort of bar height table is in the workplace and it's usually in the common areas in our designs. 
This is kind of fun. So this is actually the, again, the newer um, Yelp facility, which is more forward facing, more customer support. But these are actually people that are working. They could be with a customer, but they have these areas to pull off. So they're going to have their main workstation, but the idea is that they can meander and they can make kind of selections of how they want to work that day. So we just need to make sure that we have those areas set up for them. Okay, so I'm going to go outside the office, which uh, for us, it could be outdoors, but it's, it's not necessarily the work environment. We're actually just kind of um, in public spaces. Uh, this is actually an event we did in London. Uh, we're kind of showcasing some workplace strategy uh, to the European market, which um, is really just starting to get involved in the open plan. I think in London, fine, but most of continental Europe still likes cubes, still likes a very hierarchical structure. So the organizations are very hierarchical and they don't have these open spaces where you can kind of just work, plop down your device. Um, this was in London. We're just kind of showing some of our strategies in this booth. This is a pop-up shop that we did in South Carolina where we curated for a month this retail store. And the retail store was, everything was taken out of it. What we did is we actually designed these little units of furniture and we had every week the end user would change. So we had a taxidermist, we had an architect, we had a graphic designer, uh, we had a toy designer. And the idea is that every time you were done with the space, you basically had to push the furniture back in the middle. And each end user basically created their own custom environment. So given the opportunity in the workplace, flexibility if you have tables that move, if you have areas that you can reconfigure, it's highly likely people will do it. In fact, at Meraki, we have everything on wheels and we have a raised floor and everybody moves their workstations. Their configurations change all the time. This is actually how work is kind of influencing residential. We did the project in the mission called Vara. Uh, rather than just have typical lounge furniture, we tried to create some of a co-working, uh, maybe a little bit coffee shop vibe in the lobby. So people actually come out of there, they may, they may actually use the common areas rather than just kind of sit and do nothing. We actually want people to be engaged and use the space. We kind of make it feel uh, like a WeWork or an environment that they may, they may go to down the street they can have right in their building lobby. Again, this is also at Vara. Um, well, this generation loves to mix drinks, so <laughs> we put a bar in and we actually, <laughs> It's really funny because this thing gets used all the time. So they go, what do we want to put in the common areas? We want to just put the kitchen in or something like that? No, let's put some fun stuff that we think these people are going to want to use. So we put a commercial kitchen in so people actually play in this commercial type environment. And we put a full bar in there and people like to play classes or do mixology classes. So this is kind of like how we are changing, how, how this how this generation is really changing the way we perceive space and use space. This is actually at 395 Page Mill. This is the Blue Bottle Coffee Shop. And again, the idea is to make it feel as real as the Blue Bottle or as um, like a retail event. You don't want, you don't, there's no destination if we just have a guy and a barista in an opening. There is a reason to go there if it feels like a retail space. So we want to sell the idea that this is really thoughtful and designed to be a coffee shop. So this is actually, you wouldn't believe, this is actually Cisco Systems down in San Jose. So we are actually actively rebooting that client. And outside, the outdoor space is now, rather than just landscapes that really do nothing for the facility, we're actually making them active. We're putting seating out there. We're putting areas that you can actually plug in, lit, AV, so that you can do presentations. We're lucky enough to be in Northern California. We can probably work. 300 days out of the year outside, especially in San Jose. So we need to create environments and spaces for people to go outside the building and work. So this is actually one, a, a shot of the landscape at Cisco in um, San Jose. How we activated the walkways, how we created these really cute, these really nice amphitheater type settings for people to work in. So kind of an ending, I think the, what I was trying to say here today is that work kind of happens everywhere. And um, a lot of the pieces and devices that you make today have sort of driven 
where um, we place the workplace. So it really is all over the place. It is, it is the third office down at the coffee shop, but also the whole campus is now an active work area. We need to kind of create these little vignettes and places for you to go, but it's a lot of what you guys are doing that has sort of driven this. And um, it's kind of a lot of fun, so thank you. <laughs>